are going to talk about condition arising. We will discuss four kinds of condition arising according to the Huayan school of Buddhism. The first condition arising is based on karma. Everything is about our good deeds and bad deeds. That's why we have reincarnation. So this is talking about reincarnation. The second kind of condition arising is a liar. Little do we know that karma actually happened in our own alaya consciousness, in our mind. This deluded mind of ours create the world. Then we have the third type of condition arising. Life is not about karma. It's not about our deluded mind. It's actually about our true nature. Everything is created by our true suchness. Lastly, condition arising based on the Dharma Pattu. We call it the Dharma realm, our one true mind. The one mind is the universe. The universe is our mind. It's the reality of one mind, the world of the Buddha. So let's first talk about condition arising based on karma. Vata Buddhism, we always talk about everything in terms of the 12 links of dependent origination. How does reincarnation come about? First, we are ignorant. We forgot we have the Buddha nature and we have a sense of the self. Then we will start having mental formation that our karmic deeds, our volitional activities. After karmic deeds, we will have a liar consciousness. When the mother and the father copulate, that's when the consciousness goes into the egg and the sperm. That's how we become alive. Number four, when the body and the mind are not fully developed, they are called the name and form. Number five, we slowly will develop our six senses, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Then the mother will give birth, we come in contact with the world. Then we have feelings, baby will cry once they are born. If their skin is too thin, touches the air, it's uncomfortable for them. So they start crying and we need to change diapers. Then we will start having craving. Because of feelings, we will have likes and dislikes, love and hate. When it becomes really strong, it's called clinging, a strong attachment to our love and hate. Then we have becoming, same as formation. With karmic deeds, we will produce based on our craving and clinging. Then it starts a life process all over again. We will have birth, aging, and death. Everything is conditioned arising because of these 12 factors. So ignorance is actually the condition. Formation is the cause. Three to seven is the effect. Then we create more karma by the condition of craving and cleaning, the cause of becoming and the effect of more birth and aging. That's what we call reincarnation, life and death. This is the first basic condition arising we need to understand. There was a mother, her son suddenly died. She was very sad. She carried the corpse of her son to Buddha and said, Buddha, please revive him. I heard you have medicine. Buddha said, sure, I can give you medicine, but you need to go borrow a torch of fire from a household that never had a death. She went all over the city, but she couldn't find any. So she came back to Buddha. Buddha says, you can never find a household that never had a death. Your son's death is because life is impermanent. So accept the fact, start cultivating. You should try to get out of reincarnation yourself. But the mother wouldn't give up. She said, he is my life. I'm willing to die for my son. Please revive him. So Buddha put a big ring of fire surrounding this woman. Because of the heat of the fire was unbearable, she involuntarily covers her own body with the corpse of her son. Buddha said, I thought you loved your son more than your life. How come now you're covering yourself with his corpse? The fire in hell is 10 times more fierce than this. 
you should start cultivating, let go of the sadness and become a cultivator. Try to leave reincarnation. The mother really woke up and started cultivating. So what we need to do is to reduce our craving and cleaning. That's our main problem why we are still reincarnating. Number two, maybe it's not just karma. Maybe it's our mind. We call it the big storehouse of the Laya consciousness. How can we tell it creates everything? Karma actually happens in our Laya consciousness. So that's a, even a bigger secret that we need to know about life. So how do we know? Because everything is our sixth sense organs latching on to the sixth sense object, creating the sixth sense consciousness. That's how we perceive the world and that's how we create karma. The development of our eye consciousness takes nine preconditions in order for us to see something. Number one, we need space as a condition. You cannot see if something is attached to your eyes like this. You have to have a little distance. We call it space. Number two, we need to have light. If you are in the dark, you won't be able to see. Number three, we need the eye organ. There's two parts to this organ. One is the physical eye itself. Two is the organ of purity. The mental part of our eye organ. Number four, we also need the state. We need the sense object. Whatever you want to see, I want you to see this and that, an object. We call it the state. Number five, we also need attention. You need to put attention to an object. I want to see this, I put my attention to here or there. Okay. Then we also need the sixth consciousness, which is the basis of discrimination. We need to think. That's our sixth consciousness. Then we have the seventh consciousness, the basis of our defilement or purity. Depending on how strong the self is of the seventh consciousness, that determines how defiled we are or how pure we are. Then we also need the fundamental basis of all our consciousness. That's the eighth consciousness, the Laya consciousness. Then we also need the seeds of the eye consciousness. So just be able to see one thing. You need all nine condition arising. So you tell me what you see, is it real? Nothing is real. It's all a perception of your eyes. The fully conceptualized nature. Everything is only your deluded mind perceiving the world. We often say, in the dark of the night, you mistaken a rope for a snake. That's because our perception is deluded. We think it's a snake, but it's actually a rope. And if you look at closely, it's not even a rope. It's just made out of threads. So we need to see the world more clearly. It's only our perception that we are having a lot of emotions based on what's happening to us in our lives. Number three is the condition arising based on our true suchness. Maybe life is not about karma, it's not about the deluded mind, it's about our true nature. We call it the suchness. Ten Thai Buddhism tells us that there are actually ten features of the ten Dharma realm that's already innate in us, in our Buddha nature. The mind is already the Buddha. So what are these 10 features of every Dharma realm? Number one, form, which is our outer appearance. Human have human outer appearance. Animals have their animal appearance. That's their outer form. Number two, inner essence. Every human has different personality. Then we have our substance. That's the combination of the form and essence. Then we have the force. What is your energy force? If you are a heavenly being, you love to do wholesome deeds. You're always kind and compassionate. That's your kind energy. But if you are a hell being, your energy is anger. Because of our force, we take action in terms of wholesome or unwholesome deeds. Our karmic deeds is our cause. 
basically same as becoming craving and cleaning that's our condition then we will have effect our habitual effect people from the prior lifetime they were a bodhisattva this lifetime they naturally do good deeds they like to share they give hugs they love others then we have our actual retribution which realm you take birth in that's your retribution then we have the ultimate state from number one the form all the way to number nine the retribution that is called the ultimate state everything is empty in nature and everything is condition arising so if you just change your mind align with your buddha nature your mind is the buddha lastly we have the tamatatu as the condition arising of the whole world this is the hua yin school of buddhism based on the flower adornment sutra because of the one mind we are all together in this dhamma tattu the entire universe is this mind the mind is the entire universe we have four dhamma realms the first one is the dhamma realm of phenomena what you see in the physical world we call it the dhamma realm of phenomena number two is the dhamma realm of the principle what you do not see behind the physical existence it's the heart it's the mind it's the principle for example i have a piece of cake this cake is the realm of phenomena i put a lot of love in this cake then the love of my heart is the realm of principle three the non-obstruction between principle and phenomena this beautiful cake symbolizes my love and my love is in this cake then there is no obstruction between the physical thing and my heart so that's the higher wisdom four the non-obstruction between phenomena everything is mutually contained in each other this hair of mine is my love this boar is my love everything is my perfect heart that's the world of the buddha buddha always lived in this perfect world so we want to learn about this perfect condition arising of the dhamma tattu so to summarize there are four kinds of condition arising one you can think life is all about karma we need to reduce our craving and cleaning number two maybe everything is about how i think everything created by the mind so it's like a dream it's illusory it all depends on how i perceive my life then my life will change for the better number three is based on my true suchness my mind is really the buddha i can change all these to align with my true buddha nature number four everybody is one in the dhamma tattu the mind is the buddha so we call this non-obstruction between phenomena the reality of one mind that's when our buddha nature creates the entire universe and the entire universe is in our heart so when we reach this level when you chant the name amitabha just one recitation of the buddha's name you are already in the western pure land so let's create a beautiful western pure land in our lives right now and when we leave this world we will go to amitabha's western pure land so that's the class for today thank you for listening amitabha